is the start of the next pandemic lurking in Siberia. As the permafrost thaws, it releases dangerous viruses and bacteria that have survived frozen for millennia. Basically, many historical diseases are now considered extinct. But is that really true? Are the deaths that the thawed zombie pathogens have already claimed just a prelude to a global catastrophe? Well, one thing is certain, we will find out very soon, whether we want to or not. The Danger from the Ice Whether it was the bubonic plague, smallpox, or Spanish flu, throughout the ages, our ancestors have always had to contend with devastating pathogens that sometimes wiped out large parts of the population. But as we know, the era of such viruses and bacteria is long gone. We have developed vaccines and found an effective weapon in antibiotics. And although pathogens sometimes find new ways to infect humans, many diseases of the past are now considered to be extinct. But whether this reassuring assumption really corresponds to reality will soon become clear. The new old threat is by no means lurking in scientific laboratories or at livestock markets, but in the ice. This is the case in the permafrost of Siberia. In the icy dark environment, which offers virtually no oxygen, historical viruses and bacteria have managed to survive for several millennia. The fact that this is a scenario that is frighteningly real was experienced firsthand by the inhabitants of Siberia in the summer of 2016. While the sheer endless stretch of land was groaning under a severe heat wave at the time, something was happening that left doctors completely baffled. More than 70 people had to be treated in hospital because they had contracted anthrax. Tragically, a 12-year-old boy was not to survive the disease. The puzzling thing, to date, however, the last outbreak of anthrax in Russia had been a full 75 years ago. And indeed, it was to take some time before the background of the sudden outbreak of anthrax was deciphered. Due to the high temperatures, the upper layers of the permafrost had thawed and released the carcasses of dead reindeer. Since the animal still carried the preserved bacterium Bacillus anthracus, it made its way through the food chain to humans. A number of scientific studies have shown that such cases need not be the exception. In 2017, Belgian researchers succeeded in reviving two viruses they had discovered in 700-year-old reindeer excrement. Three years earlier, French scientists had even managed to wake up a 30,000-year-old virus from its long hibernation. Experts believe that as the global permafrost melts, more bacteria and viruses will inevitably be released. However, estimates say that many viruses will die off quickly once they are exposed to the effects of the environment. Things are somewhat different, however, in the case of bacteria. These are not only more resistant, but also capable of exchanging genetic material when they encounter their modern counterparts. And even if the corresponding development is still unclear from today's perspective, the basic forecasts appear nothing but rosy. If global temperatures continue to rise, near-surface permafrost is likely to decline by 37 to 81 percent by the end of the 21st century. Copper Burial The year is 2017, when researchers in the west of Siberia record a curious discovery. Specifically, the experts here came across the grave of an adult and a baby about six months old. While the mummified remains were once wrapped in layers of birch bark, cloth, and fur, one strange circumstance in particular caught the eye of the experts. The baby's body was speckled with copper shards that once belonged to a cauldron. What prompted people 1,300 years ago to engage in this unique practice is uncertain. But this was not the only striking feature. For some reason, the dead were buried in a north-south line, with their feet pointing in the direction of a nearby river. And even if the burial site still poses some puzzles to researchers, its study may help to better understand the history of human settlement in Siberia. The Dog Mystery The fact that some dogs roamed around the prehistoric villages of Siberia was nothing unusual. But since settlements usually housed more than 10 four-legged friends, archaeologists were even more surprised to find the remains of more than 115 dogs 
in a single village. Analysis of the bones revealed that the dogs resembled Siberian sled dogs, but they were much smaller. Located near the Arctic Circle, the region was inhabited by humans as early as 2,000 years ago. The remains of game and reindeer indicate that the quadruplets were used as hunting and herding dogs. Moreover, the recovered parts of sleds showed that the dogs also transported the villagers from point A to point B. However, the dogs' duties included another, far crueler aspect. They served as meals or even as sacrificial offerings. Thus, the remains of the slaughtered dogs were found between those deer and birds. Therefore, the fact that some dogs were apparently mounted after their death seems all the more astonishing. The village also had a pet cemetery that contained the skeletons of five dogs. Just like the humans, the animals were laid on their sides and buried in shallow graves. They were the only known dogs to have received this honor and appeared to have died a natural death. The Malta Boy Warning! Danger of Confusion Malta does not refer to a southern European island nation, but to an important Paleolithic site in the Angara River Valley in central Siberia. Some time ago, researchers were fortunate enough to discover a 24,000-year-old grave of a boy here and to sequence his genetic code. Why is this so important? Well, experts have long been trying to figure out exactly when Eurasian and East Asian ancestors of Native Americans left their homelands and began intermingling. The Malta boy's genome suggests that a group related to Europeans contributed about 30% of the Native American genes. Curiously, the child who was about four years old did carry the DNA of modern Native Americans and West Asians, but he was not related to East Asians. This is despite the fact that the closest relatives of modern Native Americans are Korean, Chinese, and Japanese. The lack of genetic similarity could at least give an indication of when the populations had not yet intermingled. Most likely, this did not occur until after the time of the infant, whose people added about 15 to 40 percent Eurasian genes to the Native Americans. Poor Bashan Poor Bashan in Lake Terracol, or the mysterious ruined island. Discovered in 1891, the complex covers an area of 3.5 hectares. Surrounded by a 10-meter-high rectangular wall, Poor Bashan still embodies one of Russia's greatest mysteries. No one knows the original purpose of the structure or its true creators. The vague conjectures say that we are dealing with a former monastery complex. Nevertheless, a radiocarbon dating of wooden pieces carried out in 2020 revealed that the complex was built in 777 AD. However, it is still unclear why the structure was built on a lake 1,300 meters above sea level, far from settlements and trade routes. In addition to the monastery theory, there is also the interpretation as a fortress or summer residence. The Exploding Tundra A few years ago, scientists on a remote island were paying special attention to where they were stepping. Bizarrely, Belay Island in the Kara Sea had turned in places into a jelly-like mass that bulged and then burst open. Henceforth, the strange spots appeared in all corners of Siberia, their explosions sometimes leaving small pits and sometimes huge craters. One crater on Yamal Peninsula even had the width of 30 meters. The researchers were concerned about the danger posed by these ticking time bombs, so they decided to open some of them. Subsequently, the bulges released particularly concentrated methane and carbon dioxide, and while their exact backgrounds are still shrouded in mystery, they may be linked to the unique geology of the tundra. Sealed by permafrost, an ancient gas belt lies beneath the Earth. As the exploding spectacle occurs in Eurasian regions which have warmed noticeably, melting permafrost could also be causing the subsurface gas to rise. However, Researchers have no clear answer as to what the explosions are all about. One theory is that too much pressure builds up as the methane flows through the ground. The Lykov Family After the split within the Russian Orthodox Church, the religious grouping of the so-called priestless was formed. The members of this current were convinced 
that the arrival of the Antichrist and the Day of Judgment were imminent. In order to escape the clutches of the state, which was considered godless, some of the true believers retreated to isolated areas. Among them was the Lykoff family, which moved to the upper reaches of the Akaban River in the 1930s, and by 1978 had been completely forgotten. But at that time, when the geologists combed the area, where supposedly no man had ever penetrated, they found there, to their own amazement, a family of five. While the father Karp, the sons Savin and Dimitri, and the daughters Natalia and Agafya were still alive and well, the mother, Akulina, had presumably starved to death in 1961. The Lykov's way of life was described by researchers as a mixture of Peter the Great and Stone Age periods. While family members used sharpening steel to make fire, they wore shoes made of birch bark, they did not use anything like salt, and bread was completely unknown to them. Despite the unexpected visit, however, the Lykovs continued to adhere to their traditional way of life with disastrous consequences. As an old believer, Dmitri refused medical treatment for pneumonia and died in 1981. 1981 was also the year Natalia and Savin died of kidney failure. Then in 1988, Agafia had to say goodbye to her father forever. A little later, there were reports of the alleged marriage of the only remaining member of the family. However, this claim was to turn out to be a hoax. Agafia still lives 250 kilometers from the nearest human settlement. Click on subscribe because there will be more impressive videos soon.